this is the first in a five part series that discusses uh, the antiquity of omkareshwar the um, connection of shankara adi shankara with omkareshwar the newly inaugurated statue of oneness the statue of adi shankara uh, at omkareshwar and also the proposed uh, museum uh, at omkareshwar so first uh, from the newspaper reports and uh, uh, what we see on uh, tv uh, i understand that the madhya pradesh government has unveiled uh, a large 108 feet, uh, feet statue of adi shankara at omkareshwar and this is a fantastic uh, achievement it's a great endeavor and uh, the madhya pradesh government should be heartily applauded for uh, having initiated and completed this successful now words are really insufficient to complement the efforts of the madhya pradesh government their team and lnt i think uh, who have um installed or have constructed and installed the statue now what is interesting is that the biographies tell us that adi shankara's mission began from Madhya Pradesh, once he met his guru, Govinda Bhagavad Pada, at Omkareshwar. And from there, Adi Shankara's activities emanated to the whole of the country, including in Madhya Pradesh. So I hope that we too can make uh, a difference by finding out about Adi Shankara, about his life, actually what he did, where he went, his times, how did those times look? And we hope we can begin this study in Madhya Pradesh. And the reason is because at the sound of, you know, at the risk of sounding hugely repetitive, I have said many times, we know almost nothing about Adi Shankara. Uh, and that is why we need to study uh, and learn and find out about him. Uh, through archaeological studies. First, let's look at how Adi Shankara looked and then connect it back to the Statue of Oneness at Omkareshwar. Now, if you notice, I mean, this is a contemporary statue uh, of Adi Shankara, and this is from the um, Shankaracharya University at the entrance to Shankaracharya University in Kaladi. Now, all the images that have been built until now have all been influenced by Raja Ravi Verma's depiction of Shankara together with his four disciples. So if you see the way the cloth is placed on his head, his facial features, his torso, the waist cloth which falls down, the uh, asana on which he sits, the way he carries the manuscript, etc. All of this, uh, and of course, the Rudrakshamalas around his neck slight deviation there. They all are influenced by Raja Ravi Verma's uh, paintings which he made in the uh, 19th century. Um, no investigation, as far as I know, has been done regarding Adi Shankara's uh, actual appearance, how he actually looked before any of these statues were, uh, were, were constructed. Now, when we look uh, when in, during the recent field surveys in Kerala and especially in Tamil Nadu, several images and paintings of Adi Shankara murals, uh, you know, were, were discovered. And if you look at these images very carefully, um, Shankara has a, a boyish appearance, irrespective of whether he is depicted at a young age or slightly later. He has a, a kind of a boyish or a childlike appearance. Uh, he appears to be, based on the images, there are images which where he is shown uh, standing as well, I think. Uh, let me come to that. From which we can see that he was uh, somewhat shorter than contemplated by Ravi Verma and possibly a bit talky as well. He seems to have sported curly hair as noticed in the various uh, ancient images. These are images from 
the 8th century uh, CE or 8th century AD onwards up to the Vijayanagar period. So going forward, all right, this study of the iconography of Shankara might change the way in which images are cast, paintings are made, and it might change our entire um, way in which we envision Shankara as we go forward from now. Now, I hear from various newspapers whose links I have, are put here that the MP government has installed a very large uh, image of Adi Shankara at Omkarishwar. Again, this is a commendable effort. Now, based on whatever photographs I have seen in the news report, I realized that the Adi Shankara image at Omkareshwar deviates from Raja Ravi Marma's concept, which is good. Okay, I think this is the first image where um, the the um, image deviates from Raja Ravi Marma's uh, concept of Shankara, and that is good. The statue of oneness at Omkareshwar quite correctly has depicted Shankara bearing a childlike countenance. Based on photographs, I haven't seen it, but based on photographs, this is my um, sort of conclusion. And those who have seen it may, may correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the other thing they seem to have captured very well is his stocky appearance. Okay, Obviously, we didn't, I mean, I don't imply that you know, Shankara was a you know, very heavy set person, but he was stockier than how um, Ravi Verma has uh, painted. Ravi Verma is more sort of in a classical sense uh, the way sculptures are made, Tribanga, he seems to uh, try to sort of emanate that uh, in, uh, in in his in his painting of Shankara. But Shankara, I think, seemed to have been a little stockier, and this image uh, has, um, has cap captured it uh, from what the photographs show quite uh, well. Now, I would say, you know, congrats to the designer. You know, kudos to uh, the sculptor and the LNT engineering team for having executed this. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a remarkable achievement. And I, they really should be commended. And I don't know who these people are. I don't know who the designer is, who the sculptor is, and who in the LNT team actually managed the uh, the the image, meaning the the form and shape of the image. And I really am eager to connect with them to you know convey my congratulatory images, but more importantly, understand the mindset uh, that uh, sent them uh, to make the form. Uh, the way it is, uh, it has come out. So that's good. And I really would like to connect with them if somebody can help me do that. Now, this image, though, again, based on photographs, the, accurate, the original image may be different. You know, it seems to deviate in a certain way also. And we should be aware of that. Now, what we see in early images is that Shankara sported a single vastra. That is, that seems to be uh, what the, my understanding is based on looking at all the ancient images. I went in and studied the, uh, you know, the various uh, Shastras, you know, uh, Yati Dharma Samuchya and also the uh, Matam Naya uh, and other, other scriptures to understand uh, what is the significance? Is there a necessity for the Yatis to cover their head? And what it appears is that, I mean, again, somebody who is well, much well First in Sastra can correct me. It appears that as long that is, if a sannyasi is a uh, paramahamsa, and Shankara certainly was uh, parivrajaka, parimaham, paramahamsa parivrajaka, uh, they don't need to apparently uh, cover their head. In the case of paramahamsa specifically, they don't need to cover their head. Now, of course, I, I don't want to set off a controversy, but this is my limited understanding. And the iconography seen from the very early period suggests that Shankara did not sport a cloth over his head. Uh, there is one image that I'm still uh, waiting to uh, photograph, actually study and photograph, uh, which may give me a much stronger confirmation about this, but uh, that is my impression. What I notice is that in, in images beyond the 17th century, this Uttariya, which is which is shown in Omkarishwa, the upper waist cloth, upper cloth um, is noticed only after the 17th century. That is, in, let's say, modern period images. And uh, in these res in this respect, uh, you know, here, Shankara's, you know, upper cloth, and actually even his, his, his uh, waist cloth, almost seems like a tuning. 
right? And a tunic uh, to to state that again. And in that, I would say that it deviates from um, uh, the ancient images. Uh, that is in one respect. Uh, we should not, you know, make a big, uh, you know, mountain out of a molehill. But this is some is an observation uh, for going forward. Obviously, I am sure, and I am absolutely sure that. You know, while this is the second large image or that is recently been done, there is a history of another uh, couple of large image, three large images which were done a bit earlier. I am sure another couple of more images of Shankara will come up, come up in the rest of the country. So as we go forward, uh, I think we should retain his uh, boyish image, a boyish countenance or boyish uh, appearance, and also ensure that you know when we build future images or paint that we look at the the uh, tunic rather the uh, waist cloth and the uttariya very carefully uh, in 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 uh, future uh, images and future paintings irrespective of all this i still would say that the mp government and the designers and uh, engineers uh, sculptor and lnt deserve, deserve you know deserve massive massive credit for what they have done but the first question that we should ask ourselves even before all this is why did they choose Omkareshwar to construct the statue? And that we will come to in a subsequent video. Thank you very much.